favorably. Representative Gary Carter. Um, Representative Carter has House Bill 509. At your pleasure, Mr. Carter. Thank you, Mr. Chair, members of the committee. Um, I believe there's an amendment prepared by Senate staff to put the bill in the proper form. Um, and let me tell you briefly what the bill does and what's contemplated by it and what I hope to achieve. Representative Carter, would you like for us to take up the amendment and, and adopt that amendment so you can? Yes, yes, sir. It? Is that amendment, you have a copy of, is that amendment 3702 that you're speaking to? Yes. And that. And you've seen that amendment and are familiar with that I'm amendment. familiar with it, and I think it's a great idea. I think it clarifies the bill. So let's, uh, if we will, members, it's Amendment 3702. Would you like to discuss the amendment, uh, Representative Carr? Yes. And I can only discuss the amendment in the context of the bigger bill. So just Well, let's do that then. Members, uh, 3702 is an amendment, if you'd like. Is there any discussion on the amendment? Uh, chance for you to take a look at it without... Is there any objection to adopting the amendment? I would move that we adopt the amendment without objection. 3702 is adopted, and Representative Carter, you may proceed with the amended bill. Thank you, Mr. Chair and members of the committee. Um, we have schools that are, are in need of improvement plans in the state of Louisiana. And when a school is in need of an improvement plan, uh, and that's already something that's required by state statute, the Louisiana Department of Education uh, provides that when a school has a D or an F for a certain number of, of, ye of, of years, or they have other areas that they need to improve, that school has to come up with an improvement plan. And so what this legislation requires is that that plan be presented at the school for the parents so they can have information and know what caused the school to be in need of an improvement plan, what's the improvement plan, and what's the timelines for implementing the course of scope outlined in the improvement plan. And so the way I envision it is this is legislation intended to encourage t parent Parental involvement in education, have the parents involved with what's going on in their kids, in their kids schools, and it's certainly efforts that's going to change the curriculum or the improvement plans of a school. We want those parents to be involved. And the way I think about this is we have, I represent the city of New Orleans, and, and let's say that there's a building in the city of New Orleans that wants to change its zoning. Well, you have to have uh, all sorts of community meetings and public meetings on why the zoning is needed. Well, here we have schools that are going to require an improvement plan, and I want the community, the parents, the teachers, everyone to know what's the improvement plan, why the improvement plan is needed, when it's going to be implemented, and so forth. Uh, and I gladly answer any questions that you all may have, but I'm excited about this legislation that we have schools around the state of Louisiana, and I believe it's over 200 something schools that are failing, that require an improvement plan. And I want those parents to be aware of the need for those plans and what's going to be done in order to improve those schools. Representative Carter, um, I'm just looking at the, and, and I haven't had time to completely digest the amendment. But and, and what the amendment does, the way the bill was first drafted, the question was, well, who's the person who's going to present uh, the plans at the schools? Would it be the school board? Would it be the principal? Would it be the superintendent of the school? Uh, and I know that some schools, for instance, in the city of New Orleans, we have, a, we have a school board, we have a superintendent, but we also have charter schools. So what the amendment does is it clears it up and it clarifies and it states that the governing authority of the public school is the person who's going to be required I to give the, the plan. I conversation now. I'm sorry. <laughs> now, that you, now that you said that, I remember looking at that and we were talking about using the governing authority that's instead right. of a, a particular And I think one. that's the appropriate way to do it. So these these meetings then would take place either at the school or at the school board? Or they would take place at the school. Okay. We want those parents to go where they drop their kids off the school, where they know this is where their kids go to school, and we want those meetings to take place at the school itself. That's um, Senator Walsworth for a question. Representative Carter, I'm, I'm trying to help you out on your fiscal note, and the reason why your fiscal note is so high is because you're – it's the governing board and those that's a public meetings and they have to uh, publish the the minutes of the public meeting too so I, I was just um, but if it was just the superintendent doing a 
in school meeting that then I think that you're clear but but with your amendment I think it does say governing board so I, I got Jody who's the smartest lady I know so well, maybe, Jody can, help, maybe Jody, yeah. Jody can help us out yes uh, Jody Maroner, Legislative Fiscal Office. Um, Senator Walsworth, um, initially, as, as Representative Carter pointed out, the bill originally called for the school board to conduct these meetings. And so there were those costs associated with the official minutes and publication of those minutes for the school board. This clarifies that the governing authority can um, provide for that presentation to be made by the principal or the superintendent or whomever so it removes the okay. official meeting of the school board and so it alleviates the those costs but it does not mitigate the cost of conducting for, for the school to conduct that meeting um, at, at, at after hours and and the fiscal note kind of reflects and 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 um, the possibility provides of the, the number of impacted potential impacted schools where those annual meetings are going to have to be conducted and so there there is a dual referral on the fiscal note um, and that even with this amendment does not mitigate the cost for that of that dual referral okay. and, and if I can respond to that <clears throat> we're talking about a meeting after the school in a gym or yeah. somewhere like that the cost there is, should be absolutely minimum that there's a failing school and the, the principal or the, whoever it is going to have a meeting with the parents uh, to discuss the improvement plan for that school. I, I'm struggling to see the need for a dual referral to finance. I mean, we certainly didn't consider it. It, in a, it didn't come to appropriations on the House side. And on the House side, we even had the language where it was confusing whether or not it was the school board. It certainly wasn't my intent to have the elected, all the members of the school board show up. The plan is, or it was contemplated by this legislation, is just to make certain that parents are aware of what's happening at these schools at the schools that their children go to. So I'm struggling to understand the fiscal impact here if you have a meeting after hours with those parents in a gym. You know, I guess, I guess if they choose to so serve sodas and coffee that there will be a fiscal note associated with that. But um, <laughs> the, But the governing authority is the school board, correct? It's not the superintendent. It's not the... That's because you're inserting the following. The governing authority of a public school that is required pursuant to the rules adopted by the State Board of Development Plan shall, within 60 days, provide for the presentation of the approved plan during at least one public meeting held at the a public school. Can you just tell me where the superintendent is doing it instead of the school board? Well, the, well, I, I guess I understand your, your question now. The way it was originally drafted, we had the superintendent of each school or that person's designee may appoint. It, it, I think Ms. Surrett has an answer for that. Hold on. Ms. Surrett. Okay. The amendment says that the governing authority shall provide for the presentation. It doesn't mean that they have to do it. They can designate anyone they want. They can do it as a board, or they can have the principal do it, or they can have the um, superintendent, or they may have a board member. So it's that they shall provide for the presentation, and that's, that's where that language. Before it said that the superintendent had to do it, um, so that's... Still open. I'm sorry. Now you're on. But it still says the school board may, so therefore it's still underneath the, uh, yeah. the fiscal note. I mean, well, but but the the if it specifically the said the, the superintendent note, will do that, then you might yeah, be. But able the to. but the fiscal note. So the number of schools that will potentially be required to have these meetings are schools that are determined to be academically unsuccessful that's an f rated school the there are new labels um and a new um 
structure under the revised metho uh, methodology for determining the school performance score. And Bessie adopted additional provisions that said, in addition to the school performance score, a school shall receive a, the, a, a letter grade for the subgroups of students. And so those subscores will also be used to determine whether a school is defined as in need of academic improvement or in urgent intervention required or comprehensive intervention required. So under the, under the, the, um, the legislation and, and cl as clarified by the amendment, all schools that have to have an improvement plan, that's your F-rated schools, that's schools that have been um, rated D or F for three consecutive years, and they're identified as comprehensive in um, intervention required. And then you have schools that, regardless of what their school letter grade is, it could a be an A-rated school, but, a sub but if their a... subgroup score is an F, for two years in a row, that school, an A-rated school, is Good labeled hand -hand as urgent intervention required, and they have to develop an improvement plan. Right. So when you add up all of the schools in all of those groups, in year one, there's about 527 schools that will have to hold these meetings. In year two, you have an additional group of 600 schools that some portion of those schools will move into the the um, urgent intervention required category where they're going to have to develop a plan based on their subgroup scores. So that could be, it could be 100 schools, it could be 300 schools. So you could have somewhere, you could go from 527 schools in year one to almost 900 or more schools in year two that yeah, are going to have to conduct these meetings. Right. The cost for a school there is a cost associated with a school to open up the school after hours for meetings. There has to be a custodian there to open the school and, and, and a janitor or custodian. There may be support staff needed to help with the meeting. And if there are, if there's a, a, a meeting of a number of people, there are security um, personnel required and schools that don't have their own resource officer contract with local law enforcement districts um, to provide that that security detail um, I I assumed at, at um, an annual salary of thirty five thousand dollars for that custodian and support personnel to come in and and work four hours overtime to open up the school stay during the meeting and close up when the meeting was over uh, at about a hundred dollars for that for those three for dual personnel dual. is about three hundred dollars per school okay times five hundred or or seven hundred or nine hundred I, tr I tried to help you <laughs> no <laughs> so, listen i appreciate it and i've heard from some school boards where they said that listen we're going to have 58 separate meetings i'm sorry i have no sympathy you have 58 schools that are failing our children failing our children i'm with you and, and I'm of the opinion that the parents need to know why that school is failing, what they're going to do to fix it, and the timeline for them to turn it around and fix it. I think it. it ought to be the superintendent that takes care of the, it, just it, me personally. It, and I'm the in, principal and, ought to be there, but I think the superintendent ought to be there too. And it's one of those things where who presents the meeting? Yeah. Uh, I'm with I, I hate to say I'm agnostic towards it. I want the meetings to take place. Right. I want those parents to take place in the most cost-effective way to make it happen. Because we want to improve our schools, I think we have to have the parents involved. I think those parents are going to demand action. And so what's the best way to go about it? I think the amendment where the, the governing authority shall provide, this is how it's going to take place, deals with the vast majority of the fiscal note. And, and I think it deals with whether or not it should be re dual referred to finance. And now we're looking at, well, what's the cost of a school to have an after hours meeting to say why they're failing and maybe it's 300 bucks? I don't think that warrants a trip to finance. Representative Carter, let me see if I can help you. Thank you. Uh, we can't control the trips to finance, <laughs> and you know what happens to bills and finance. I do. So I'm looking at the I'm looking at the fiscal note, and I'm, I'm I looked at it before and, 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 and spent some time. The subgroup performance scores, I think, is what probably really are causing the issue. So when we look at what the subgroup.
performance scores are, they'll be calculated for each major racial and ethnic group, as well as economically disadvantaged. Students with disabilities. This is something that the, the, the first two, I'm not sure that, or the first three there, I'm not sure that schools can, can control that. Students with disabilities, they certainly can't. English learners, they can't. Foster care, they certainly can't. Homeless, they can. And military affiliated. So those are the subgroups that could end up having to have this program. I've got an amendment that I think can help you. Okay, I'm uh, curious to know what it does. It's an <laughs> amendment. The amendment, I'm going to pass it out. I'm going to give you a copy of it. And members, the amendment is 3684. And Representative Carter, as soon as you get a copy of it, I'll go over it with what I think we can do. Thank because you. I think it accomplishes the purpose that you want, and I think it may, may help your fiscal note. I'm not sure. If the academic improvement plan is required by the state board, is based solely on academic performance of a single subgroup. So it could be foster care. I've seen this language before. Okay. This language was presented to me by the School Board Association. And here's Did it include that the school's governing authority shall make the presentation of the plan? So you're going to still make the presentation in a manner it determines well to best communicate the plan to the parents and legal guardians of the students in that subgroup. So we continue to have the meeting. We continue to address that. So if you have a subgroup that is homeless, mm -hmm. I mean, that's probably a small number or none in some, but, but say you have two. So you can present it to just those two parents through the to the principal and that's so. the that's the logic that they gave me for it and let me and and if that's what it re takes to move the legislation forward i'm certainly willing to do it i have to do it in order to move this important legislation forward and i'm not sure but, if it but let I'm me i'm not sure if it makes it go to the graveyard of finance or not but, but i think but, it helps but here's my concern with it that i had let's say that there's a school that's an a school but the Hispanic students in that school are failing, have F schools. And I told this to the School Board Association. I don't want to sweep that under the rug and, and say, hey, listen, this great school is failing the black kids. It's failing the disability, the kids on disability. It's failing the kids that are Hispanics. I think that needs to be known by the parents. And I don't care if the parent is white, black, or Hispanic. If there's a group of kids at my son's school, my daughter's school, that's failing, there's something wrong with the environment of that school that, that perhaps may change my impression of that school. So that's why I told them, listen, I appreciate the effort, but I'm not the sort of guy that wants to brush problems underneath the rug. I'm the sort of guy that, hey, we have a problem. In this state of Louisiana, we just, I heard the presentation where we talked about right before this legislation started with what are we doing to make sure we're paying our teachers well? Because it's a problem how much we pay our teachers. It's a problem how we handle education. We have 500 schools would have need of an academic improvement plan. I don't think it has enough attention. I don't think enough parents know. And I certainly don't want to brush underneath the rug that we are failing the students who may need education the most. I, I hear you loud. But, but I, to I, deal I, with I, the fisc, to deal with finance, I certainly appreciate it. And if this is the <laughs> only way I can move it forward, I accept it. Representative Carter, <laughs> let me make clear. I do not know if this changes the fiscal note and to what degree, because we have a very low threshold in the Senate of $100,000. I have no idea if this amendment will fix that or not. But I do believe that I don't think it's brushing it under the, the rug, because I think it clearly states that they will meet with those families in the subgroups and that they will address those issues, which I think is what you want to do. So I'm going to offer the amendment. And if there's any discussion on the amendment, Senator Mizell, did you have a question? Or is it a separate question? Not on the amendment, just for, OK. Senator Mizell, go ahead. Uh, I appreciate what you're trying to do. And, and looking at this, are you enhancing something, or there's nothing there that gets this information to the parent whatsoever? I'm not aware of any. I mean, I'm sure you could go online and probably look for and search for an improvement plan. Senator Mizell, yeah. these improvement plans um, previously um, um, were required only for F-rated schools pursuant to the law and Bessie policy. In October of 2017, Bessie approved 
changes to their bulletin that um, that changed the way the school performance scores were calculated, and it added these new subcategories of, when... of schools that they mm-hmm. that were determined to be UIR, UIN, CIR, right. and right. and of those of those categories, two of the categories, the urgent intervention required and comprehensive intervention required according to the policy require a plan those subgroup scores will be determined in 2018 so this will be the first year that those scores will be assigned and that schools once they've been identified will have to complete the improvement plan and submit it to the department for approval so there is nothing available right now because the schools have not been required to have, do this okay because yeah because the fiscal note shows it's going to be a thousand eighty seven when the subgroups come up a thousand eighty seven schools that there are um, the department had given me some preliminary numbers in October of 2017 when those school when those rules were promulgated mm-hmm. that indicated of the of there's uh, uh, in 2017 there were 1,272 schools that received a school performance score and um, of those um, they determined that. Um, there would be a, about a 57% increase in the number of F-rated schools, about 76% of those schools, which would be about 960, would be identified as in need of intervention, and two, 300 and something would have been identified as um, urgent intervention required. Um, the numbers in the fiscal note reflect the updated information that I received um, probably two weeks ago Mm -hmm. from the department that shows that those numbers are something less than what was originally projected. So of the the schools that are, that will be required to complete the plan in the first year, there's 215 estimated um, in, of the, of the, based on the subscores, and there are 272 schools that are D or F rated schools for three consecutive years that will be required. So uh, only one group is class, I'm sorry, the academically unsuccessful is an F rated school. There's about 40 of those. Right. And then schools that are comprehensive intervention required, those are schools that have had a D or an F for three years in a row. And, and, there's approximately 272 of those that have been identified already and then the estimated number of schools based on the sub performance score of more one at least one subgroup so if you have three subgroups and you have three f's you have to have um you have to improve for every group two consecutive years in order to move out of that uh, Uh, to exit that status so that 215 is the estimated number of schools that will receive uh, based on the, the sub score, okay. which will okay. be designated okay. or, or identified in 2018. But you know, this law does not create that. That's already law. This is just to answer your question is whether or not that information is making its way to the parents. Yeah, because my original question is, so the parents that are in all these groups that are have children in these subgroups right now, don't know it. There's currently, Aaron Bendeley with the department, there's currently no requirement that a school system Has make to. publicly available their improvement plan to parents in this way. And I think that's what Representative Carter's bill is attempting to do. I did want to correct one thing. Um, I think there's a maybe a misinterpretation that somehow we need to add to the number of the schools that are identified for the first time as an F-rated school as new schools that would have to have a plan. I think we're double counting those schools. I even checked with our assessment and accountability staff this morning. It is very rare, if not unheard of, that a school goes from a C to an F. They go from a C to a high D, to a mid-level D, to a low-level D, and then they go to an F. So um, I just wanted to point out that I think the fiscal note might, and I'd be happy to get together with the fiscal office later, might be double counting those schools because 
it is very rare or you know very unlikely that you would ever have a school that's not captured in the comprehensive improvement category that they would have to have a reconstitution plan separate and apart from that they're already they, going to be in that category yeah, exactly an, oh, yeah but isn't that amazing though i can have a if you want to open up if you want to take a building and take it from residential to commercial to open up a snowball stand in new orleans and change the zoning you have to have a public meeting and notice and all of this stuff but you have a f school that's failing our children you have an improvement plan mandated by law and you don't have to let the public know i have a meeting that's that's just outrageous and so i'm excited to carry this bill forward and, and I, I think you've got i'm sorry i'm still not oh, I'm, oh, I'm sorry on I'm still on okay but uh, if they've not been told anything just to send something home to the parent is a huge step forward if they've never gotten anything before so to to make it a presentation that's frankly creating this fiscal note is two steps ahead of where we've ever been so i i i really agree that the subgroups have got to be part of the because that's that's part of the problem i, I totally agree with that but to maybe bring it back where if a parent gets something look they're they're addressing the problem this is what they're doing how many people are going to show up for a presentation is, is my now issue that's, that's what, costing you that's just what the cost is coming one from. of the things that the legislation does is it requires a week's worth of notice and so i want to know right here's a school in my district that's a failing school a d school i'm gonna use my social media i'm gonna lose my media contacts and say hey listen there's, an, there's going to be an important meeting that's going to discuss what's going on with your child right now and encourage them to show up. Now, if I can only get a handful to come, mm -hmm. that's, that's something I just can't control. But I'm sure if I said, let's send a mail out to all of these parents and say, hey, listen, your child goes to F school. There's going to say, hey, here's the cost of, of sending that mail out. What is the cost of postage? Then I'm going to say, you know what, I think you should probably mail to those students, to those parents, a copy of the improvement plan. Then they say, well, here are the printing and copy costs. There, there, there's always going to be something that they're going to use to stop this yeah. process from moving forward. And so I, I think you improve schools in large part by in, including parental involvement and $300 for an after-hour meetings at the school. I, I, I don't think that warrants a trip to finance. <laughs> but I'm trying. <laughs> that, that, yeah, thank you. Thank, uh, thank you, Senator, thank you Senator Walsworth is going to have a question, but before he does, for the point of clarity, those of you who are from southwest Louisiana, a snowball stand in New Orleans <laughs> is a snow cone stand in southwest Louisiana. I don't know what a snow cone is. <laughs> <laughs> Senator Walsworth. Representative Carter, I'm, I'm right with you. I think the subgroups are important. You can, I can't tell you one of those that's not important. And 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 if you leave one behind, you've who decides who gets left behind? These are important. And, 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 they ought to, and, and, yeah. and so sometimes we have A schools that are they're not capturing everybody. And are they really an A school if they're not capturing everybody? So I, I'm I'm with you, and, and, and if it goes to finance, I'll be right there beside you saying this is important. Thank you. Okay. Members, the board is clear. We do have the amendment before us, which is amendment number 3684. Huh? Yeah, there's a fourth one. Oh. What? Yeah, no, Senator uh, Milkovich is here. So, members, uh, we offer, uh, offer 3684. Is there objection to that amendment? There is. There is objection. Senator Walsworth objects. Ms. Richard, call a roll. If you support the amendment, Don't you vote yes. Nice things I said. I right know you there. said a lot of good about me yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Senator Walsworth objects to the amendment. The vote will be to support the amendment or not. If you yeah, support it, you vote amendment. yes. This is the amendment by, um, by the chairman. Chairman. Which, which I, who I love, but I just don't support this <laughs> amendment. <laughs> All right, that's enough of the love fest. <laughs> Senator Walsworth? No. No. Senator Mizell? No. no. Senator Milkovich? Yes. Yes. And I vote yes, but the amendment fails. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. Two to two vote, the amendment fails. Representative Carter, I do have a call.
cards in support of your bill. Uh, Ms. Bendeley has already spoken. Um, Dr. Smith, did you wish to speak or no? Okay. So uh, John Warner, these are cards then who do not wish to speak who are in support of the bill. John Warner Smith, Education's Next Horizon. Cynthia Posley, Louisiana Federation of Teachers. Carrie Monica. Mallory Wall Padgett, Stand for Children. Kelly Botcher, LFC. Sarah Vandegrift, Louisiana Association of Char Public Charter Schools. Eva Kemp with the Democrats for Education. And Latri I'm sorry, Latri I can't read Su your Suchitra. With the Orleans Parish School Board who is here to provide information if needed. Um, I do have cards in opposition. Uh, those cards in opposition who wish to speak, Louisiana School Boards Association, Scott Richard, Mr. Richard. I have other cards in opposition who do not wish to speak, Michael Falk with the Louisiana Association of School Superintendents, Marky Pierre with the Louisiana School Boards Association, and Danny Garrett with the Louisiana School Boards Association and St. Tammany Parish School Boards. Mr. Richard wishes to speak, Mr. Richard. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Scott Richard representing the Louisiana School Boards Association. Uh, just want to shoot from the pure uh, practical side of uh, the mechanics of the instrument that's before you today. The, we believe as school boards, because we deal with this on a regular basis, that the open meetings law sh shall be interpreted very liberally. And the language in the amendment that was added to the bill today by the author basically reinserts a major concern we had on the House side. When, when you reference the governing authority of a public school to, to notice a public meeting, then all the open meetings law requirements kick in, which includes the publishing of minutes, which, i.e., is, is thoroughly explained in the fiscal note. The fiscal note really addresses that issue. Um, we supported uh, the chairman's amendment to address some of our other concerns. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, pretty, it's pretty simple. If a school such as Lafayette High School, the largest high school in our state, with about 2,500 students and is a currently graded A, has a subgroup of military-affected families that does not meet the standard, then under the current bill before you, every parent would be noticed to attend a public meeting to address an improvement plan that addresses military affected families or a very small subgroup in that school. And I don't know how to explain that any, any clearer. That's, that's the, uh, the area where we have concern and we, we just don't think it's, it's in a posture that we can support, unfortunately, after much dialogue with the author. Thank if you. I can, thank you, Mr. Richard. Um, if I can respond very briefly, Mr. Chairman. You may. Um, if we've had many conversations about it, and when I first working with the department, started thinking this through. First question was, who would possibly oppose such legislation? Well, the people who have failing schools, and so I started hearing from school board associations and others saying we have all these meetings, and again, I just don't have sympathy for them. I have sympathy for the children who are attending these schools, be it in Lafayette, be it in New Orleans, be it wherever, anywhere in the state of Louisiana, we have to focus on education. Uh, they asked me to add language saying that under no circumstance would the open meeting law apply to this. I, I can't put that in my name. I don't have the courage to do so, and I'm not doing so. I think the language as written and the first amendment offered by the chair clarifies that, where it says notice of the meeting, and it doesn't say it has to be the school board. It doesn't have to be the elected body. And I think my understanding from the fiscal office, that solved the open meetings aspect of the fiscal note. And the only remaining issue of the fiscal note is the cost for opening up a school after hours to have the meeting. And then dealing finally with the issue of the subgroup. Yeah, why are we failing military kids? <laughs> They're serving us. If we're failing those kids, I don't want to brush that under the rug. But in most of the time, when we're looking at these subgroup, subgroups that are failing, we're looking at poor kids, we're looking at disabled kids, we're looking at Hispanic kids. It's not some very tiny, minute, group that we're failing, and if we're failing schools, I'm not in favor of, of brushing that under the rug. Senator Walsworth, you had a question for respect. Mr. Reshore or for the author? Yeah, I, I'm sorry. 
and maybe y'all can help me on the, the specifics. Does the school board have to, they approve the plan? As, um, I, I plan, guess I'm all plan is presented by the superintendent and his staff, likely to the Department of Education for approval. The Department of Education approves the plan and then it's routed back to the school system and the amendment would require the a meeting within 60 days. And as we interpret this amendment and in, in conjunction with the We've sort of separated the board and the superintendent in their duties. And I, I didn't, I don't, I, I, I think it ought to be, uh, the, the board wants to show up and, and sure. as, as public, and that's fine. But I, I, I just think it ought to be just the superintendent sure. and the principal doing the meeting. And, and I, I'm, I'm not sure how to get around that. But if the board has, uh, I guess they prove it. Do they specifically have to approve the the plan Normally for every through school? The, through the budget process, if there's expenditures that are required, the school board has some oversight of the plan, but the instructional component of the plan is certainly handled by the superintendent and his staff. So if we, I said, I guess going back to your sort of original bill, if it just says the superintendent shall present a plan approved by the State Department for addressing the needs to the school, or to the parents, whoever that is, it's the superintendent, then we've taken out the notice, we've taken out public record, we've taken out open meetings law, quote unquote, and, and that takes out part of that fiscal note. It's the superintendent that does that, along with the principal in most cases, I yes, would say. Yes, sir, think. we thought that that issue had been uh, relieved on the House side, and then with today's amendment, as we've had a chance to look at it and have When you got the, the governing authority Yeah, when you reference terminology like the governing authority of a public school and a public Ms. meeting. Ms. Bendedly is coming back down, I think, to help us out a little bit. And I mean, it's, it's open to interpretation. Just Listen, if I, to, to deal with that, I'm certainly in favor of amending it back. Instead of governing authority, we just go back to the superintendent or his or her designee. Shall present the plan to the parents. Yes. And Senator well, Walsworth, I'm, we certainly. Oh, just one note, all schools do not have superintendents, charter schools don't. So, I mean, we that's, can change it too. Yeah, yeah right, to accommodate so, that. And yeah. I think that's why the amendment was changed back in this way not to undo what had been done in the house but there had been a, a situation brought up by the orleans parish school board pointing out that they have charter schools that are their own leas they have their own governing authorities their own charter governing boards um there was some question about well who does this bill speak to who uh, shall conduct the meeting yeah and i think the intent was to ensure that the superintendent or equivalent the leader of a charter school that was its own lea would be the entity responsible for doing this so that whoever's responsible for writing and submitting the plan to the department is the same entity that shall hold the meeting and i believe that was the intent maybe it wasn't fully accomplished in the language but my understanding was that was the intent and senator walls work there's certainly the uh we had a bill in house ed that moved out of this committee just recently that calls for two letter grades there's certainly a serious concern amongst districts and should be uh, amongst all citizens of the state of louisiana that there will no matter what the numbers are articulated in, in the current fiscal note there will be an increase in the number of schools that need improvement plans so it do, it's still a concern for the for our association, and I and I'm not going to get into the emotional we won't get side that, of the that, whole issue. Uh, I'm trying to address this from a very practical right, perspective, right. And, and I'm trying to I'm trying to get you there. Member Suchitra Sapathi here on behalf of Orleans Parish School Board. While the school board itself in Orleans Parish takes no position on this bill, Representative Carter has been very gracious in addressing some of the issues that we do have concerns with, particularly where it relates to governing authority. Because New Orleans has a unique combination of both direct run and charter schools, the superintendent is not responsible for the direct education at charter schools. The governing authority would be the boards of those individual schools, which would be responsible for preparing the plan. We have asked for this amendment, and he has been gracious enough certainly to work with us on it, with our goal being, if you want someone to be able to be in the best position to provide the information to schools that 
our charter in particular, then that person may not, in the case of Orleans Parish, be the superintendent, but may very well be the governing authority, which is in charge of charter schools, and they are all uniquely different. So it is an attempt to, to ameliorate some of the concerns and still deliver what I think Representative Carter has asked for. Thank you. Um, Senator Walsworth, you still, <clears throat> go ahead. All right, so who in the charter schools in New Orleans would be the spokesperson to do that? I mean, we've got principals in, in my charters. You do, and there are principals at charters in Orleans Parish. Is, is that the? So the bill, as written, allowed, required the superintendent. It didn't, as I recall, did not have a provision for principals. So there are principals at all schools. So they're if, direct I, run if we or put they're superintendent, our principals, can we figure out some I, I think language? Just, I just did. You're getting, you're getting there. I, 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 I think we're you. getting there, and I think if we do it, the superintendent. We're not used to getting out of here before 4 o'clock anyway. So Listen, how many lawyers does it take? How many lawyers and legislators does it take to write a sentence? Uh, the superintendent or his or her designee or the school leader of, of a charter school. Does that? School leader? That's, that's the language. The school leader of a charter of a charter school shall a charter be the, school. Okay. or his or her designee shall be the person. Can we? Can you live with that? Were? I'm sure we can certainly work. We can we can figure out how to work with it. We're just trying to get. I think. And that, we want. We are. I don't not, think y'all want the whole public open. There it is. The governing authority of a charter school, right? Does, does that solve it? If we. But oh, that, it's a boy. So yeah, that board and that's public. Yeah, so that's, now, that's, so now you're going back to the open meeting law and everything else. All right, like well, I'll take that back then. Okay. Go back to school leader of a charter school. Senator Mizell, let me yes. turn your mic on. Yeah. Senator Mizell, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. We've, we've geniuses on our staff, you know. But if you put a combination of those, we're, we're not limited to using one word. No, we're not. So you could put a superintendent or a school leader or a principal and or his or his or her designee. Right, right, yes, right. that would that would be fine. And that would. And again, I'm I'm agnostic to that, so that's so fine by on me. That? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You Thank you. Be. Thank you all so much. We're uh, <coughs> we're getting there. Uh, Listen, I really do thank you all for your, your and patience and indulgence here. I'm gonna remember that on the house side. Y'all have any bills coming before appropriations? Um, <laughs> <laughs> That's what the money is, or the lack thereof. Oh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> is it really there? No, it's not. Representative it's Carter, don't, don't, don't get ahead of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Let, let's uh, pause for a moment. I'd like to ask, is, is Teresa Brown here? Okay. That's, you're going to do Ms. Hilferty's bill? Yes, sir. Okay. That's what I need to know, because if not, I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Uh, Senator Walsworth. Well, our staff is working on that, and you and I, I was just going to see if Mr. Sale may have put a card in on some rhyme or reason, <laughs> just because she misses us, obviously, and we miss her. Hey, it beat me to the punch, Mr. Sale. I thought you had retired. I am. I just came back to see So once again, in the back corner, we have the usual suspects. <laughs> Plus one. <laughs> Plus one. <laughs> Reverend Carter, just to say, I'm, I'm not sure, but I'm just, uh, before we proceed and as we get the amendment on, I'm not sure that this takes care of the fiscal note issue. And I think that maybe you would request uh, another one because you know what happens if this goes to finance. I do. Mr. Chairman, I'm sorry. Procedurally, Ms. Surratt is ready, but procedurally, you're going to need to reconsider the vote by which set 3702 was adopted and withdraw those amendments and resubmit. Members, uh, Amendment 3702, I believe I offered that amendment. Yes, I offered Amendment 3702. I'd like to reconsider the vote by which 3702 was adopted. Is there any objection to that? Without objection, the vote is reconsidered. I now withdraw Amendment 3702, and we will have another amendment. Am I on? 
Okay, it will be set number 3709, and what it does is it changes line eight, H1 to read the superintendent, the principal, or his designee of a public school that is required pursuant to the rules, and then it finishes up with the rest of um, what the amendment was, and the same line 18 will have the same, the superintendent, the principal, or his designee shall provide for an annual update. I, I thought we were adding language for a charter school, saying school leader of a charter school. Superintendent, principal, or other school leader, or his designee. Other school leader. Yeah, that's it. I believe we all understand what the amendment does. Are there questions on the amendment? And that was 3709. Members, do we all understand what Amendment 3709 does? Any questions? Any questions from the audience? Members, we're going to I'll suggest that we adopt Amendment 3709 without discussion, without objection. 3709 is adopted. Representative Carter, you may close on your bill as amended several times. Listen, and I thank, I thank you all for letting me take up too much of Senator's time. Uh, you know, I appreciate the, the thoughtfulness here and the consideration. I'm trying to improve our schools, and I'm certainly trying to improve the information that our parents have. And I think this is going to engage the parents and the public, and I think it's a good thing. So thank you all for your, your time, and I ask that you move it favorably. Thank you. And uh, Senator Walsworth moves that we report house bill 509 as amended favorably is there any objection without objection house bill 509 is reported favorably as amended thank you thank you all so Carter. much uh house bill 616 by representative hilferty and i believe miss hilferty had texted me and asked for uh miss brown